the Buccaneers in the playoffs for the first time since 2007, and we are ready to work against the Washington football team. We were without Ronald Jones, the second. Rojo injured a quad in pregame practice and is unavailable. Next man up, it was me. And, you know, I've played in plenty of playoff games. You know, I know the atmosphere. And once your number's called, you know, you have to do what you have to do. 20, 26. Leonard Fournette was getting nearly every carry in a playoff game. And suddenly, that lack of regular season playing time looked like a blessing in disguise. I think that's what God had in store for me because of the last four playoff games, I was just fresh, felt good. I had no problem, I had my win. It was just in his plans. Fournette punished the Washington defense, gaining 132 yards from scrimmage on 23 touches. And the legend of playoff Lenny was born. I've been knowing Leonard for a long time ever since I was getting recruited by LSU. Leonard nickname really is Seven, because that was his number. Button, that's just something his parents them gave him. During the season, everybody started, like, I think Tom started calling him first. I don't know, they started calling him Lenny. Lenny, way to run, bro, keep it up. Or in the locker room, if I call him Lenny, he be like, man, come on, man, you know, I don't like that. Like, he be like, man, you know me. Like, that ain't my nickname. Like, you know, he love Button or Seven, like, so I'm like, bro, everybody else call you Lenny? Why I can't call you Lenny? I, I feel like Lenny was corny. Don't get me wrong. At first, you know, I wasn't too fine of it. But then, like, I, it just spread like wildfire. So I just had to accept it. From the first Washington game, bro was going crazy. So he started calling himself Playoff Lenny. Playoff, playoff Lenny, you hear me? Playoff. <laughs> I didn't know that Leonard didn't like the name prior to the playoffs, but he definitely was playoff Lenny. He made so many plays for us. Everybody knew what time it was, you know, playoff Lenny and all this, so it kept going on and on and on. Hey, that's why you wanted me here. Damn right. You need team attention. And the ball off and four out of stutter step. Touchdown, Tampa Bay. Yeah! The Buccaneers signed Fournette to finish games. Now the fourth quarter belonged to playoff Lenny. Hey. Put the ball out, bro. You played your ass off. It's a big win, man. I'm happy to be a part of the organization. We're thanking God for the second chance. Thank you. Tampa Bay began its season with a loss in the Superdome. But those Buccaneers were gone, replaced by a team that had come together. Now, they just had to show it. Everything, everybody trying to take away from us, we got to go earn it. And that's all with them. them that's in black. We're going hunting. We're going hunting tonight. So when we step out there on that field, it's up with us, man. Let's go, go man. Go. Let them do all that. They got us. They got something to prove. We done beat their last two times. We don't got to prove. That don't even matter. I'm telling you, like, once we get in the playoffs, that's all that matter. I said we're going to see them when, the, when it mean the most. I'm waiting on you to make a big play. So I can make a big play. Because I feed off you. Feed off <laughs> That's what I want to hear. I had went to Antoine Winfield and I said, bro, let's take over this game. We got to get a turnover. Let's show them why they drafted us. Like, we young, but let's show them why they drafted us. Late in the third quarter, the Bucks were down seven with the Saints driving. That's when the rookie safety and second year linebacker spoke their game changing play into existence. Picked up by the Bucks, Devin White. Devin White follows a blocker down the sideline, and the Buccaneers come up with a football. Hey, we just talked about it. Man, I was looking for one block so I can go to the crib. We needed to score bad. Tom kept screaming, we have to score, we have to score. I'm like, damn. And I'm like, we got to make a play. Brady has time, starts up and goes to the back. Pop ball, touchdown, Tampa Bay. It's Leonard Fournette. They talk about, they talk about. Let's go, we do this good day. We do this, we do this. Buccaneers took a three-point lead in the fourth quarter and had to protect it from an explosive Saints offense and star running back Alvin Kamara. And I am not still mad. Come on, man. Come on, AK. Everybody know he always juking people. He always slipping off of other people. I was out there making plays going hard. I'm telling like I was talking noise. I was in the zone. Hey, 41. Hey, hey, hey. Yes, sir. Here you go, 
gonna get me, man. I can't be got, man. Hey, I can't be got. I am not one of them, man. He was like, I'm gonna get you. I'm like, nah, bro, I'm not one of them. Like, you get them, you don't get me. I'm gonna put the dagger in him. Watch. The game was tight. I just knew crunch time where they going with the ball, Alvin Kamara. <laughs> Alvin. Picked off by Devin White to the 40. Shops a guy out of his way. Inside the 30, Devin White down the sideline. And the Bucs have the ball. Come on, come on. Come on. When Alvin Kamara come out the backfield and he square his shoulders, he going down the scene. Drew Brees used to lob it over to him. I undercut the ball and that was all she wrote. I told my coach I was about to put a dagger in him. <laughs> We're heading to the NFC Championship game. Bucks win! Bucks win! Bucks win! I mean, we just beat the team that we couldn't beat, that beat the mess out of us, that made that embarrassed us. Like, we just beat them. It kind of put you on a high horse. And it was going to be scary for whoever came after.